Hi, so in our first lecture, we're going to start with the cardiovascular system and we're going to start to learn about blood. I like to start this with a real quick overview um, about blood. So just watch this for a minute. I think it gives you some really good helpful information about what we're going to be studying. What is blood? Blood is actually a mixture of cells suspended in a slightly yellowish liquid called plasma. Plasma is made up mostly of water, but it also contains proteins, sugars, hormones, and salts. The three different types of cells you'll find in plasma are red blood cells, or erythrocytes, white blood cells, or leukocytes, and platelets, or thrombocytes. Red blood cells give the blood its color and make up 40 to 45 percent of your blood. They're round and look a little like a donut without the hole in them. Their main job is to carry oxygen to the other cells of the body and to take away the carbon dioxide as a waste product. Red blood cells only live four months, but healthy bone marrow produces four to five billion red cells every hour to keep replenishing the ones that wear out. White blood cells, on the other hand, are the body's defense system. They all fight infection from bacteria, viruses, all those nasty microbes that can cause disease. Whenever germs begin to infect your body, they send out a signal that the granulocyte recognizes. Just as soon as the granulocyte detects the signal, it begins its journey to the site of the infection. When at last they find the invader germ, they quickly move in for the kill, first attacking the invader and then eating. But something else that is truly amazing is how the platelets work. Platelets are small pieces of cell material, or cytoplasm, whose job it is to plug holes in the vessel walls. So, Say you're standing inside the blood vessel and looking at the tear in its wall. You'd see millions of platelets responding to the injury, throwing themselves over the cut. They stick to the wound's edges and to each other to form a plug that slows the loss of blood within three to five minutes. A platelet plug will last for only 24 to 72 hours because the platelets run out of energy and begin to fall apart. But as long as there is still an unhealed hole in the blood vessel wall, the clot will continue being formed, dissolved, and reform to stop and prevent more bleeding from occurring. When the wound is completely healed by the new cells growing over it, the clot will be cleared away and blood will begin to flow through the vessel normal. So the cardiovascular system is three main things that we look at. We have the pump, which is the heart. We have the pipes, which are the blood vessels. And then we have the blood. And blood is actually connective tissue. You might remember that from AMP1. Connective tissue always has a matrix and cells. So the cells are the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the platelets. And they're inside the plasma, which is the matrix. Now, if you were to take a sample of whole blood, and spin it in a centrifuge, it would separate out all the heavy things which kind of sink to the bottom. And those would be all the erythrocytes or the red blood cells. The cells are called the formed elements. The plasma is mostly water and that stays on the top. And plasma is usually clear. It can even be the light yellow in color. And then right where the formed elements meet with the plasma, so you see all this red stuff and then you'll see the yellow, you'll see a little layer. It kind of sometimes looks like peach fuzz or mold. It's kind of a real, real thin little layer. That's called the buffy coat. And the buffy coat contains all of the white blood cells and the platelets. So when you're looking at blood, we've got a lot of red blood cells, a lot of plasma, and a little tiny bit of the white cells and the platelets. So why do we have blood? Well, very important for transport. So number one, it delivers oxygen from your lungs and nutrients from your digestive tract to all cells of the body. So it's one of the biggest things is for your blood. It also eliminates waste. So it picks up the CO2 and the metabolic waste like urea and creatine and brings them back to the lungs. The CO2 is excreted at the lungs and all other waste mainly at the kidneys. You probably know it transports hormones. Remember, a uh, hormone is a chemical messenger that's transported in the blood. It helps maintain body temperature. Blood moves heat. Um, you know, when you're very, very warm, your blood vessels to your skin are going to vasodilate. And when they vasodilate, that means they're going to get bigger and they're going to carry more blood to the surface of your skin. Your skin gets red, right, or pink and feels warm. It's eliminating heat. When you're cold, they vasoconstrict and they keep that temperature closer to your core. Core, excuse me. Also maintains normal pH. What's the normal pH of blood? 
you guys should all be saying 7.35 to 7.45. It's a range and we're talking about arterial blood. And so we have things called buffers in our blood that are there to help buffer and keep pH normal. We have clotting factors. They're going to prevent you from bleeding to death, right? So when we have damage, if we lose too much blood, our blood volume would fall and our blood pressure would fall. And that would be a problem because we couldn't get blood to our organs. So it's very important at minimizing blood loss and then helps protect us and prevent infections. Our white blood cells, right, are, are going to be patrolling. We'll be talking more about them. We have antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that are going to bind to things called Called antigens are kind of like your body's army. So if we look at blood, it does range in color from very bright red to more of a purple dark red. So when it has a lot of oxygen in it, when the O2 concentration is high, it looks more bright red. And when it has less oxygen, it can look like a darker red or purplish. We just went over the pH of blood. So we said it was 7.35 to 7.45 for your arterial blood beat. It is a little warmer than body temperature, so it is warm. Viscosity kind of talks about how thick it is. So they say that blood is about five times as viscous as water. So if you're thinking about viscosity, compare water to syrup, like maple syrup. Maple syrup is obviously much more viscous, right? Well, blood is more viscous as well. And the normal volume of blood, they always use a magic number of five liters, so that's what we're going with. It makes up roughly 7% of your body weight, and it's should be about five liters. So you can have hypo or hyper. So hypovolemic would be if your blood volume was low. So what would cause this? Well, obviously, right, bleeding. So if someone is hemorrhaging, um, obviously they cut their foot off, right? It's pretty obvious, but you can have internal bleeding as well that could make you um, become hypovolemic. So usually some sort of bleed could occur. Um, you could also be hypervolemic, which is when it's too high. Typically, this is probably going to be um, some sort of endocrine disorder where it's affecting your water balance in your kidneys. But it's very, very important because as far as blood volume and blood pressure, they have a direct relationship. So if my blood volume goes up, now the blood pressure is literally the force of blood hitting the inside of the blood vessel. So think of a garden hose. If I were to increase the hose, if I turn the water up so more water is coming through the hose, then it makes sense that there's more pressure in that hose, right? So if the blood volume goes up, the blood pressure goes up. Well, we really worry about hypovolemic because now if your blood volume goes down, what's going to happen to your blood pressure? that's going to go down. And like I said, blood pressure is the force of blood as it hits your the inside of your pipes or the inside of your vessels. And that's what propels it to all organs and tissues of the body. So if it's too low, you won't be able to get blood to your vital organs. Now, plasma, again, if we spin it in a centrifuge, we can easily see the plasma is the watery layer. It's about 50 to 60% of your blood volume. It's usually clear. You should be able to see through it. It usually has like a light yellow in color. And plasma is mostly water, so it's 90% water. And so our water level, right, how hydrated we are, is going to affect our plasma volume. And our plasma volume, right, is part of blood. So if our plasma volume goes up, then our blood pressure goes up. Um, this is important because if someone is hemorrhaging or bleeding, let's say you know, you're out and in a war zone and you can't you know, get a blood transfusion right away, what you can do is to use what's called a plasma expander. So these are IVs that are given. They can be like Ringer solution, but they're a solution that's given um, because what it'll do is help maintain the plasma volume. So it's not going to do anything with oxygenation because when you lose blood, you're losing those red cells too. But what it does is it helps maintain the total volume here, the blood volume, to maintain the blood pressure and hopefully keep that person alive until you get where you can actually treat the cause of the hemorrhage. Now, plasma also contains proteins. So we call these plasma proteins. They're all made in the liver. 
So liver, critical for that. And we're just going to talk about some of the main ones. So one of the big ones is albumin. Now albumin is the most numerous plasma protein. It does a lot of stuff. It's a carrier protein, so it can bind to molecules and transport them. It's a very important buffer. It helps maintain pH. But one of the more important things is it maintains osmotic pressure. So hopefully you watch the review material and you remember what osmotic pressure is because if we were to have a blood vessel or a capillary, osmotic pressure is always the force pulling water and materials inside the capillary so it helps keep the water in your blood and doesn't let it leave we have transporters we have a lot of transport proteins that bind to things so a lot of times they're called globulins there's gamma globulins which you might know as immunoglobulins so you see this little prefix immuno here these are antibodies so antibodies, a fancy word is immunoglobulin. So they usually start with the letters IG, and then there's another letter there. Now we're gonna talk about antibodies a lot more in the immune system, but antibodies are things that bind to what's called an antigen. So an antigen is a protein on a cell membrane. I like to call them cellular ID cards. And antibodies seek out and go after antigens. And this will be important when we talk about blood typing and then obviously when we start talking about the immune system. Now the transport globulins transport things. You learned thyroid binding globulin in AMP1 transports thyroid hormone. There's also some that transport metals. You see the little Fe here? So transferrin is really important for transporting iron. And then we have apolipoproteins which transport lipids. Other proteins that are found inside our plasma help with clotting. So these are things like you may have heard of fibrinogen or thrombin. So their job is to help with clotting to slow down blood loss. Remember, if you lose too much blood, your blood volume goes down and that affects your blood pressure. So there's other plasma proteins as well. We have a bunch of hormones that are in there. We're going to have um, enzymes. Like remember, there were protein hormones. Enzymes are proteins. I have antibodies here again. I have them in there twice um, because they're going to be found in the plasma. So the other thing in this view, you can kind of see an overview of some plasma proteins. We know there's a lot of water in plasma. It's mostly water. And then we just say other. Others, everything. So if you're getting a blood glucose level checked or you're getting your cholesterol checked or they're measuring your calcium level, all of this stuff is transported in the plasma. Because remember, if we look at blood, blood is made up of two things. It's made up of the, let me go back up here, the cells, which are called the formed elements. These are the, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. And then it's made up of the plasma. So the plasma is the main transporter. So anything that's being transported in your blood is in your plasma. So usually when you have blood work, they take your blood and they centrifuge it. They spin it down to separate the plasma, and then they're going to test the, the plasma for all of those substances. And so serum is plasma without clotting protein, so it won't clot. So that's our first lecture, our overview on blood, and our next lecture we'll start looking at the formed elements beginning with the red blood cells.